YouTubers. This is Joe from Martellian TV. Another game of interplanetary ice spy going on here on Mars, back in Gale Crater, back at Mount Sharp. Now, some of you may have seen uh, this video that I did a while back called Water, Shipwreck and Alien Building Complex on Mars. It's had nearly 3,000 hits. It's not doing too badly. Not going viral, but it's doing okay. Uh, now, if you've already seen this, you will remember this structure here, which looks very much like a ship, a long ship here in the background. Now, this is the bottom of Mount Sharp here, and there's even water, what looks like water down here. This is crazy. Um, but one thing I didn't cover, uh, even though I was interested in it at the time, there's a couple of things either side of this ship, this wrecked, half-buried shipwreck here. There's something to the right of it, and there's something interesting, very interesting to the left of it. Now, I was actually sent in uh, some images recently by, uh, I think, Dawn, I think it was, who sent me in some uh, an email with some of these ChemCam shots on them. And I'll show, I'll show you them. Uh, I don't think this is them here. Hang on. <laughs> when you see this, it's, it's going to blow your mind. Um, hang on, let's get the right folder here. Uh, do I have it up here? I don't have it up there. But I, basically, I will send some in. And she said, what, what's going on here? And what, they, what they've been doing with the ChemCam is taking shots of the background. And they've been pointing it right at this ship that I, that I just showed you. Here's the image from that video that I just showed you a clip of there. Here's the image, I'll zoom right in. Now, they're pointing the chem cam right here, right on the front of this ship, this shipwreck here, and at this structure to, to the left of it here, okay? Now, the ship is quite clear in this image because it's very light colored, uh, much lighter than the surroundings, and it stands out quite well against this darker background and uh, darker sort of wet sand and, and stuff around it which is kind of a, like a dark bluey, browny colour. Um, so it stands out quite well. And so does some of this. But in this image, this looks like a couple of structures. It looks like a, a small structure here and another sort of slight domish type structure there and a, a weird looking, almost ship-like structure here. But there is a lot of image distortion in here. Uh, not only is it quite a long way off, it's probably about a kilometre away, maybe maybe less, maybe 500 metres. It could be a mile. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. I, I could work it out, <laughs> but I have got time right now. But basically, um, there is image distortion in here, and the cameras, some of these cameras do see into near, near infrared, which does distort the image even more. Uh, but what that does mean is that you can see through some of this sand and uh, dust that tends to cover everything on the surface. So the the infrared spectrum on the camera does actually help in some ways because it means that you, you can see through stuff to a, to a certain point. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going on too long here, so let's get on with it. Now, uh, I should have the folder up here with the ChemCam shots in. Now, I'll show you the page first. I'll show you the actual page I got them from, which is this one. Uh, so 11.15, uh, ChemCam. I don't think I've ever done a video with a chem cam shot in it. This is a first for me. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dawn, who sent those um, pictures in recently, who, who's opened my eyes slightly to this. Because normally these are the sort of shots you get, like this, which is basically a close-up, probably taken at about seven, seven or eight feet away from the, uh, the rover. And they just zoom right into the, to the rock on the surface. And you can see individual pieces of of sand almost, you know, the, the detail is, is quite incredible really. And what they do uh, is they, they fire a laser at the, sur at the surface of what they're photographing and then they, they, they do a sort of spectral analysis of that, uh, the light that comes back and they can determine all sorts of interesting things from that. And here, it, I'll have a link to this page also in, 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 uh, in the description below. Uh, I'll read out some of this, I won't read it all out, it's quite technical stuff this. But basically, it consists of a first, the, the first active remote sensing spectros, I can't even say it, spectroscopy instrument for Mars, along with a telescope, remote imager, RMI, yielding the highest resolution images to date of objects greater than two meters from the rover. Two meters is around six, 
six and a half feet or something. Uh, in the in the LIBS technique, laser pulses are focused onto the sample, onto a sample, at sufficient power densities that it that is at more than ten megawatts per square millimeter. That is pretty powerful. The energy of one million light bulbs focused on the spot a little bigger than a pinhole. This is quite remarkable, really is quite remarkable. So this is a powerful, powerful piece of kit here. And it goes into more detail here if you want to read up on this. This is really quite incredible bit of kit, really. Uh, so, so what they're doing, to, to boil it down for you, is they, they, they fire the laser at the surface uh, of whatever they're taking the photograph of. And then they uh, analyze the light that, pump, that comes back and they can determine the, the sort of density of the of the the material that they're they're photographing, and the makeup of it, and the geology, and what type of rock or stone, or or perhaps even metallic elements they're they're looking at. Okay, that that's a base. That's just a very basic explanation of it. But that's basically what it does. Um, but you can you can check that out. What we're going to look at here is these particular images here. Now these are close. These first four uh, are are of the ground. As you can see, it's just a bit of rock, okay? And they've actually given us some enhanced data product here, uh, where they've upped the contrast here, okay? The raw images are up here, the full data product. And you can see one, two, three, four. The last four here are the ones we're interested in. This one, this one, this one, and this one, okay? Now, when you look at them from back here, they just look like a bit of rock don't really make much visual sense but when you look at them up close like I've got here you will see what I'm talking about now let me show you that picture again of Mount Sharp just here okay you have a weird structure sticking up here and almost a saucer shape and a, a, a sort of flat looking structure below it this is what we're looking at and we're looking at the front of this ship here okay so that is the area that's being covered in fact it goes a little bit further to the left right so bear that in mind so it will help if you watch that previous video I mentioned and here are the individual shots now this is the best one but they do look fuzzy uh, for some, now this is quite a long way off from the rover so they're actually using it here to take long shots and zoom right into things in the background which is not really what the things designed for why would they be doing that and f shooting a laser at a rock that's up to up to a, a kilometer or even two kilometers away why are they doing that maybe just maybe they've realized that these are not made of rock and this may well be something intelligently made and if I show you the other images here, before I show you the stitch together I've done, let me show you this one. Here's the front of that ship that I just showed you on my other video and that other clip. This is the front end of it. And it's highly reflective. And you can tell that in all the images that you see of it, it stands out like a sore thumb, this thing. It's very, very light coloured compared with the surroundings. But the thing next to it in this image is shown in really good detail, which you don't get from those other mass cam images because basically they were taken from much further back and they probably weren't properly in focus they weren't properly focusing on that particular spot at the time they were probably focused a bit further forward so they the detail isn't great in those and there's lots of image distortion from where they compressed the mass cam images now this does this image has not been compressed this uh, is a large image much larger in file size to the, the mass cam shots we get if you look at the file size of this one, it's 735 kilobytes. Uh, this one here, 748. This one here is 857. So these are getting pushing up almost towards a megabyte each, these shots here. Uh, yeah, 734, 735. And they're ping files. They're not JPEGs. So this means they've been uh, copied from the raw image, but saved as a ping. So you haven't lost any real detail at all. Um, so they're quite impressive. There's a lot of information in these pictures. So what I did to get a better idea of what's going on with these images is I got a couple of these, uh, two or three of these pictures, mainly this one, 
and the one next to it uh, and the one next to that uh, well these two particularly and I st I'd stitched them together so I, I, I clipped them you can see where I've clipped that, the edge off this one and this one here and then I stuck them together and here is the raw image on the right okay now this is one of the stitches I did and I didn't do a brilliant job of it. You can see where I slightly misaligned it here. So I, I did another one on the left here with two slightly different images. And I lined it up I lined it up quite well. And you can see you can see the line here. I've left it in there so you can see it there, see that. Uh, but I've, blew, I've I've sort of smudged over it a bit there to try and hide it because we want to see the detail in here. Now when you look at this thing Uh, well, I was almost speechless when I first saw it. I thought, what the hell is this? This thing that's like a huge flying saucer or some kind of spaceship or something. Uh, now, it may it may not be a spaceship. It could be another ship, as in a ship that goes on water, but it, it doesn't really look like one. And this is the enhanced version. I'll show you in my graphics processor here, because this makes a bit more sense when I explain it this way. Now, so I've got the raw images here, even though they're slightly misaligned, you can get the detail from that. And I haven't done a great deal to this. This is raw, these are two raw clips, those there, and these are not raw. I've actually enhanced this, I've gone around this with the, the light and darken tool, just darken some of the background, and just tidied up some of these lines, because it is a bit fuzzy, especially around here, you can see the fuzzy line here, I'll show you on this one. It's like uh, motion blur almost. So you've almost got a double image there. You can see it's a bit fuzzy around the edges here. So I've, I've just gone around the edges and cleaned them up a little bit uh, uh, to sharpen the image because it is a bit fuzzy. I've also upped the colour temperature on this to give it a bit of um, warmth. Uh, but I'll put different colour filters on that in the end of the video for, for you to see. Uh, so there's the ship, the very bright looking ship on the, on the right here. And there's this saucer. And it seems to have windows on it, here. And some possible windows back here. And some weird sort of round structures on it. What this thing below it is, I have absolutely no idea. It may well be part of it. It, it almost looks like it's got wheels. Uh, I mean, but some of these round structures here aren't actually completely round. They look sort of distorted. I, I, it's really, really odd, and you've got these sort of blobs over it. Th this may have dirt and, and sand and, and crap over it. I think it, the, it, the sand is kind of blown up over the front of it here. So the actual shape of this thing, it should probably be a lot more straight and, and sharper on this end. I don't know. It's a funny angle, um, but it certainly looks to me like a flying saucer, a very large one as well. I, uh, I would imagine this is something in the region of about 50 to, a, 50 to 100 feet wide. It's really quite large, probably nearer 50 feet. Uh, hard to say exactly, but it's something like that. Um, so let me show you the raw image again. Here we go. And you can see some dark patches in here. One there, one there, and one there. And you can see what looks like a roof on the top of it there. This is lighter. And you've got a very, very sharp point here. I know it's a bit blurry, but it is. It is sharp by Mars standards. <laughs> uh, and you've got a very deep shadow underneath, and uh, the structure comes round. And it's it's almost like it it would have came out, come out here, but this end is kind of broken or, or collapsed downwards. You see, it's almost like this end, this side of the saucer, if it was a saucer, and it certainly looks like one, is actually broken and collapsed down. But it may have actually been designed that way. Uh, I don't know. It could be like a the front end. This could be the front, and this could be the back. Who knows? It could be the other way round. It may not even be a flying saucer. It may just be a structure, but it certainly looks intelligent. Uh, and it's right next to what looks like a very large ship, a uh, wrecked ship. So is it a ship? Is it a building? Is it a flying saucer of some description? Some kind of aircraft we're looking at here. 
it looks like one to me. I mean, uh, this looks more like aerodynamics rather than hydrodynamics. It's it, it, absolutely insane. And bear in mind, uh, this is a stitch together here, so there's a little bit of distortion. You can see the difference between this side here and this side here. This is a bit smoother on this side for some reason. So you can see the join down here quite clearly. Look, I've left it in there. But I've kind of gone over it here to try and cover it. So what do you think? Is it a, f a huge saucer? Is it just a rock? Is it pareidolia? <laughs> that word. Uh, I actually think this is an intelligent structure of some sort. Now, whether it's actually a flying saucer or a ship could well be, but uh, it's in the bottom of a lake, which is not completely dried out, as we've been told. There is some liquid water down here, although not a great deal. So, and it even you can even see what looks like a reflection of some of this stuff in, in this material here, even in the raw image, look. It looks reflective, some of this stuff here. So maybe that's wet sand. It may not be actual water. It could be wet sand. So there we go. Is it a flying saucer that's just been parked there or, or could have been washed down off the side of the mountain or fallen down? Is it a building? I mean, I'm quite flabbergasted by this, really, because uh, even in the raw image, and when you look at the... Let's go back to the other image I got up of it here. For a comparison, now this so this is so muddy. This picture uh, because it's in color as well. Now I've enhanced the color on this, but it was it was even worse than this before I enhanced it. I'll show you the raw version, uh, which I've got here. Da -da -da. Yes, there we go. Here's the raw color version. No enhancements on this, and when you zoom in, it just turns to crap. It's just so fuzzy and uh, pixelated. You can see there's something there even in this, but the, the colour just distorts it, you really can't see any detail, it's just fuzzy rubbish. But there's definitely something there, you can see that point there quite clearly, and you can see that roof structure there, and you can see that dark part there, which looks like the front of the cabin or whatever you want to call it, cockpit. Is it an aircraft? Could be. This thing in front may be a completely separate thing altogether. It could be an, a, another ship or boat lying on its side that's, that's um, listed over and just there rotting away. Hard to tell with these things. So there we go, folks. I'll put some clips of these in at the end. There's the raw image again. Let's have a close-up on that. This will go on the cover, obviously. And I will enhance this a little bit more before I put it in the end of the video. Just to, I'll just darken some of this stuff a little bit. I won't go too crazy with it. I don't want to be accused of drawing things on that aren't there. All I'm doing is, is, is enhancing the shadows that are already there, really. So there we go. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon.